a few moments, the doctor will explain what your examinations revealed, recommend a course of care, and answer your questions. This short video will help you understand the doctor's explanations, helping you get well faster. The doctor has found areas of your spine suffering from the vertebral subluxation complex. Vertebral, meaning of the spine. Subluxation, meaning less than a total dislocation. And complex, meaning consisting of many parts. When individual bones of the spinal column lose their normal position or motion, it is called spinal kinesiopathology. This can cause nervous system malfunction when the spinal bones rub, irritate, or choke the spinal cord or nerve roots. Doctors call this neuropathophysiology. These malfunctioning spinal joints and nerves can cause muscle damage in the form of weakness, atrophy, spasm, and scar tissue. This is called myopathology. Damage to the discs between spinal bones, ligaments, connective tissues, and the resulting inflammation is referred to as histopathology. Finally, the joints and related organs and tissues begin a progressively worsening degeneration process. This is called pathophysiology. The vertebral subluxation complex can be the underlying cause of a variety of health problems. Like these rowers, when your spine is functioning normally, each bone moves in perfect harmony with the bone above and below it. When each joint contributes properly, turning and bending is smooth and easy. Special motion x-rays of the spine show how the joints of a healthy spine work together, making it easy to look up and down or bend over to tie your shoes. However, many things can cause individual spinal bones to lose their normal motion and position. When spinal joints are stuck, fixated, and not moving properly, they can cause problems in other areas of the spine. Other joints have to compensate, causing wear and tear to the spine. This type of malfunction can occur anywhere in the spine. In the neck, you can see the bone that has lost its normal motion, affecting the joints above and below. Along with improper motion, there can also be a loss of proper curves. Proper spinal curves help support the weight of the body. For example, the neck should have a healthy forward curve. When the neck loses its normal curve, the ability to turn and bend can be reduced, often resulting in headaches, neck pain, or other symptoms. Interestingly, some animals like the giraffe do not have a curve in their neck. This severely impairs their ability to bend. Other animals, such as these flamingos, have multiple curves. This permits an unusual range of motion and flexibility. Clearly, proper spinal curves are important. Your chiropractic doctor has checked for these curves, plus noted any postural deviations. Besides the loss of normal spinal curves, a low hip, a high shoulder, or a sideways bending of the spine known as a scoliosis are all signs of abnormal motion or position of spinal bones. This is referred to as spinal kinesiopathology. This can set in motion other components of the vertebral subluxation complex. Imagine that these automobiles represent the millions of nerve impulses that travel the brain stem, spinal cord, nerve roots, and all the nerves of your body. Like the cars, when there is no interference, a continuous flow of nerve impulses travel freely to each cell, tissue, and organ of the body. Like a car accident that causes a traffic jam, a loss of proper motion or position of your spinal bones can interfere with nervous system function. This can overexcite or reduce nervous system function, causing hyperactivity, muscle spasms, burning sensations, and even pain. It can influence nervous system traffic both to and from organs and tissues, setting the stage for disease and ill health. Doctors call this neuropathophysiology, meaning abnormal nerve function. Muscles can be involved too. Attached to each spinal bone are layers of muscles that support the spine. These muscles hold each spinal bone in place and help maintain proper posture. When these muscles are healthy and equally matched, proper spinal balance can be achieved. X-ray views of the spine reveal the small projections on the back of every spinal bone to which powerful muscles attach. These spinous processes make those bumps you can feel up and down your spine. The spinous process of each bone should be centered and in alignment with the one above and below it. 
Physical injury, repetitive motion, or changes from improper spinal function can make muscles on one side stronger than the other. While some muscles supporting the spine can weaken and atrophy, others can become tight and overdeveloped. This can cause spasms or permanent scar tissue, changing the elasticity of supporting muscles of the spine. Doctors refer to improper muscle tone like this as myopathology, meaning abnormal muscle function. That's why repeated spinal adjustments are often needed to help retrain these supporting muscles. When there is injury to the spine, soft tissue such as tendons, ligaments and discs are often involved. As with a bruise, a sunburn, a black eye or a sprained ankle, there is a rise in temperature and chemical toxins are released. Like the soft ice cream, the pulpy disc material between each spinal bone can bulge or herniate. Ligaments and tendons can stretch or tear. Bulging soft tissues can put pressure on adjacent nerve tissue. Like a serious burn, the resulting inflammation can be painful and cause the joint to swell. Doctors refer to soft tissue damage as histopathology. With stress or injury to spinal joints, the body responds as it does to a broken bone. Like the mineral deposits in a cave, calcium is deposited on adjacent bone surfaces. If motion is not restored to the joint, the spinal bones can eventually fuse together. Doctors call this subluxation degeneration. This is a side view of a textbook normal neck. Notice the forward curve and the equal disc spacing between each spinal bone. The spinal cord is here and nerve roots exit from both sides through openings between each spinal bone. When the spine is injured, there is often a loss of curve. Disc damage, soft tissue inflammation and nerve dysfunction often accompany this condition. Doctors refer to this as phase one. While this example is in the neck area, the degeneration process can occur in virtually any joint of the spine. If ignored, the spine can degenerate into phase two. Now, adjacent joint surfaces have thickened, roughened, and bone spurs can be seen. The body continues to deposit calcium to splint the unstable joints. Range of motion continues to decrease, and without appropriate care, this condition can progressively worsen. Finally, the body has deposited enough bony growth to fuse this unstable joint. Like cancer or heart disease, pain or other obvious symptoms may not be present. Chiropractic care at this late stage after so many years of neglect is hoped to slow this process or help other areas of the spine not yet affected. Whether you're seeking relief from obvious symptoms or interested in a preventive approach to better health, chiropractic has three stages of care. The first type of care is initial intensive care, sometimes referred to as relief or stabilization care. The purpose of the frequent visits over the first days or weeks is to help reduce your most obvious symptoms. The second stage is rehabilitative or reconstructive care. With the most obvious symptoms gone, visit frequency can often be reduced. Rehabilitative care is designed to strengthen the supportive structures of the spine and help restore your health to its highest potential. Perhaps the most valuable type of care is known as wellness, maintenance, or preventive care. This third stage of care consists of regular chiropractic checkups to detect and correct little problems before they become serious, like periodic eye examinations and regular visits to the dentist. Remember, chiropractic care takes time. Think of it as orthodontics for the spine. Instead of braces, your doctor will use repeated spinal adjustments. Chiropractic is a team approach to better health, so get involved, ask questions, Watch your diet, get the proper exercise, keep your appointments, and follow your doctor's recommendations. Doing so will help you get well faster and avoid a needless relapse. Better yet, as you experience chiropractic results, tell others. Encourage them to discover chiropractic and to learn what you have learned.